Jennifer, is this like other crises we've seen before? And if so, what can we learn from them? Thanks, Karen. It, it's a great question because on the surface, it, it might appear that it's similar, for example, to the 2008 food crisis where we're seeing consumers panic buying, we're seeing countries stockpiling, we're seeing um, some countries imposing export restrictions. And those are familiar kinds of actions in the face of a crisis. Uh, but I would say that this particular crisis in this, the underlying dynamics are fundamentally uh, different. Um, and I'll just talk, there, there are lots of ways in which it's different. I'll just talk about a couple of those. Um, and if you want to put that slide back up, that, that's fine. Um, first, I just want to say that the current crisis, uh, unlike 2008, is not, was not triggered by, you know, concerns about the global food supply where we saw, you know, traders and, and commodity speculators concerned about what, what, it, what we call the stock to use ratio, where it's the amount of stocks in storage compared you know, as a ratio of, of, of um, um, what's utilized. And at the present time, we're, we're actually grain production globally is quite uh, healthy. We're seeing the high and record levels of production. Stock to use ratios are around 30% right now. And during the 2008 crisis, it was closer to 20. So it was a much more dire, um, you know, situation that really had people concerned in 2008 with respect to the global food supply. Whereas today, um, at least grain stocks at the moment are quite healthy. As I said already, there could be some production dis uh, disruptions, but often those are uh, forecast to be more in the fresh fruits and vegetables kind kinds of um, crops. And so the, the crisis is different. This is a crisis of supply chains. This is a crisis um, that is in a way it is because we're, we're having to put policies into place for, by prioritizing public health and stopping the spread uh, of this disease. Uh, because if we let it go, it will also affect supply chains in, in important ways. And so it's in a way triggered by that kind of supply chain disruption. So it's quite different uh, in that sense. And another way in which it's quite different is, is that um, because of that situation in terms of food supply, we're, we're not seeing commodity prices going, um, going very high and, and volatile like we did in 2008. And at that time, we saw quite interestingly um, the prices were really tracking of commodities um, where all commodities were rising, uh, oil and minerals and, and food uh, at the same time. This time we're seeing declining uh, commodity prices. And, and put, even though um, some energy, uh, some commodity prices like energy are really dropping through the floor, um, metals and minerals are also falling. Food prices are maybe a bit more stable, but I think the last um, food price index was indicating a slight drop. Um, this could all change as well. We should be aware of that, especially if countries put in place um, export restrictions and that sort of thing. But it's interesting, and in particular, I put up the commodity price index information there. This is from the World Bank, which was published on their website last week, showing that um, food commodity prices vis-a-vis -vis these other commodity prices, they are a bit more buoyant. And this, is, this can be a real problem, especially for countries that rely on commodity exports for their foreign exchange and then buy food uh, on world markets because what we're seeing then is that their income is likely to fall, their exchange rates are likely to uh, depreciate in the face of falling commodity prices while their food price uh, food prices for imports might uh, remain the same or might even go up. But even there within food, which is why I put up the, uh, the um, graphic showing the impact on commodity future prices for different food items or agricultural items, it's different. Uh, even for all different commodities. Wheat is probably, you know, is doing well compared to some of these other um, crops um, because of, of the ability to get these foods to market. And as the crisis takes hold, uh, we're going to see demand falling for certain kinds of food, and that could lead to lower commodity prices. So the, the crisis feels very different to me as someone who spent a lot of time studying the 2008 food crisis. It's not that kind of like panic about about supply, uh, it's more about um, disruptions uh, to supply chains.